It is the 19th of June, and this day in Baptist history, we're going to be reading about the price of freedom. Our text is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Recently, while preaching in New Bern, North Carolina, I was informed by some of the Baptist preachers in attendance that at one time three Baptist brethren were whipped and imprisoned for presuming to ask permission to establish a church for their worship. In searching the archives to validate that claim, I discovered that on June 19, 1740, a set of Anabaptist dissenters proposed building a rival church to the one that was being erected by public taxation. The five justices who were gathered to hear the Baptist appeal were appalled. It was in, incongruous that these Baptists should be allowed to fulfill their objective. The court record reveals an ugly tale. On that Thursday, the case was postponed to be continued on Friday. Then following two sessions on Friday, they continued the case until Saturday. When it was apparent that the petitioners were well within the law according to the Toleration Act and the Act of Assembly, that had been passed in 1715, the justices could find no legal technicality to suspend to their request of the Baptists. It was then that three witnesses were suborned to make false charges against the Baptist petitioners. Rees Price, William Carruthers, and John Bryan claimed several misdemeanors against the six Baptist men, and they were bound over to appear before the general court of the province. The bonds were given, and mysteriously the record is then silent. Make no mistake about it, the Baptists were very active in North Carolina. It is estimated that between 1729 and 1778, 50 Baptist churches were founded in the state. In fact, we do well to note that few records of persecution took place in North Carolina in those days. However, there was one exception and that was at New Bern. Tradition persisted, however, that several of the Baptist petitioners were publicly whipped, imprisoned, or both. I have mentioned that the matter of New Bern was mysteriously silenced. To be sure, certain records were subsequently mutilated, were destroyed, or disappeared. Mr. H.S. Nunn, editor of the New Bern Journal, made the following statement in his paper on Saturday, September 6, 1883, concerning the matter, and I quote, In looking over the old dusty records in the register's office, we find an entry in the minute docket of the county court of 1741, noting the application by Baptists to be allowed to build a church in New Bern. Instead of granting the application, these applicants were all whipped, bound over to keep the peace, and required to give bonds for their good behavior and also to take the test oath." End of quote. The test oath did not present Baptists with any problem, for they were allowed to disavow infant baptism and transubstantiation. But interestingly, history records that James Brinson, Nicholas Purefoy, and William Fulser were publicly whipped and imprisoned as petitioners who requested permission to build a Baptist church. As I read that account, it came to mind anew that many unsung heroes have paid greatly for the privileges that we take so lightly. In the early days of our Republic, before our Baptist forefathers championed the cause of total religious freedom, Baptist pioneers suffered throughout New England. The members of the First Baptist Church in Maine had to relocate as a group to be able to continue to worship. Obadiah Holmes was severely beaten in Massachusetts, merely because he, as a Baptist, worshiped privately in the home of an aged saint. The town of Ashfield, Massachusetts was established by the Baptists. 
1770, a few congregationists built a meeting house, called a minister, and taxed the Baptist for his support. The greatest part of his salary of $1,000 came from the Baptists. Because they refused to pay this burdensome tax, 398 acres of their land was confiscated, together with their cattle, crops, and graveyards. This injustice impoverished the Baptist families, as the Congregationalists auctioned off the property to pay the tax for the Congregational Church. Fifty-four Baptist preachers were incarcerated in Virginia. Some were greatly maltreated, and their only crime was worshiping as Baptists. In fact, Dr. Richard B. Cook wrote, and I quote, The Baptists in New England and in other states north fought long and well to secure liberty, civil, and religious. But in Virginia, one of the grandest conflicts the world ever beheld was begun, carried on and successfully ended mainly through the heroic efforts of the Baptists. The Old Dominion was the battlefield on which was waged the war for the civil and religious liberties of this country and of the world, not with English soldiers, but with misguided and intolerant churchmen. Joseph Cates was whipped for preaching near Cherkaraha, C-H-E-R-A-W, Hill, South Carolina. And now we read of three Baptist preachers in North Carolina who were whipped and imprisoned for preaching the gospel. I have said that we take our privileges lightly, and surely such is the case. Our forefathers were determined to faithfully worship the Lord, and regardless of whether adversity, persecution, or the like, they sought out His presence in accordance to the Word of God. May we not make excuses in our day when freedom is fully provided. I fear that the words of John Milton are fully true. He wrote, and I quote, None can love freedom heartily, but good men. The rest love not freedom, but license. End of quote. May we not use our liberty, purchase at such great cost, as a cloak of license. To God be the glory.